Hey everyone, Pastor Nathan here. We're continuing working our way through the book of Psalms and today we're in Psalm 146. Um, Psalm 146 is one of the last five Psalms of the book of Psalms. These are known as Hallelujah Psalms. And the reason they're known is that, just as a little bit of trivia, they start off with Hallelujah and they end with Hallelujah, each individual Psalm in these last five. And Hallelujah just means something like praise the Lord. That's at least how it's translated in my Bible. In Psalm 146, the psalmist pits, well, doesn't really pit, but he compares um, trusting institutions, people, and groups, or trusting Yahweh God. This is important because in his context, um, there was a lot of temptation to trust people, institutions, and groups who did not believe in Yahweh God, and in fact worshipped false idols and foreign false gods. This is post-exilic Israel. That is, they've come back from the exile and they're in the land of Israel and there's a lot of uncertainty. Who knows what the next ruler of the larger nation under which Israel uh, was under their control, who knows what the next ruler's favor was going to be towards them. Maybe he wouldn't be as favorable as the current ruler. And there were a lot of enemies, people who didn't want to see Israel um, come back to power, didn't want to see the walls of Jerusalem rebuilt, the temple rebuilt. In that kind of context, then it might be easy for us to see how people would gravitate towards something tangible and real in order to feel safe, in order to feel stable and have provision and security in their lives. The psalmist says, though, don't go after those things. Don't trust princes, mortal men who cannot save. Like we said, princes really in, in this context stands in for those people, it's like an influential person, uh, people or group that might be able to provide some sort of stem temporary stability. They're temporary, they're broken, they're fallible. The psalmist then says, compared to that, the almighty maker of heaven and earth, the eternal one who created all things, that's the one you can trust. And oh, by the way, all of you folks who might be widows, orphans, poor, in prison, people who have had injustice done against them, for you, the psalmist says, God is with you. And so for us then today, this means a couple things. One is it's, it's still tempting in the midst of uncertain times, in the, in the midst of troubling times, to trust um, a seemingly influential person, people group, or institution above and beyond Yahweh God. The second thing, though, is that while the people of Israel were always looking ahead towards God's provision and ahead towards God's salvation and ahead towards God's Savior coming, we can look back. If you're watching this when this aired or right after this aired during Holy Week, we know as followers of Jesus Christ that God has already provided for us. He's provided for our ultimate need at the cross through Jesus that he's taken away our sin, our shame, and our guilt, and has instead clothed us with the incredible, perfect life of Christ. And because of that, then, we can continue to fix our eyes on him as the person who is our ultimate hope. If he's taken care of our eternal challenge, defeated death, and conquered shame, guilt, and sin in our lives, he can also take care of all of the quote-unquote little things, like um, our stability, our provision, and our hope in this life and the life to come. So I hope this has encouraged you to continue to fix your eyes on him and to trust him. And in your prayer life today, perhaps to reveal to you where are you trusting things other than him or more than him, perhaps, uh, alongside of him. And, and how can you then reorder your, your trust life so that you know, he comes first before all things. Hope you have a great day. We'll talk again soon.